guys. I purposely ground the end of this tip off. There was a posting. I guess the guy snapped the tip off a flex cut blade. So I'm going to show you how to fix it. I took a piece of sandpaper. It's 220 grit and I just glued it to this board. Which was actually an old stripe. But anyways. The one thing you don't want to do. Is you don't want to bring your cutting edge up. To the broken part of the back because you're going to lose all that blade life so you want to turn it over to the non-sharp side and you want to start working that tip in there now somebody posted unless you have superhuman like kung fu grip guy maybe and go so fast i doubt you're going to generate the heat to burn this blade and that's why they say go to sandpaper I'm going to put these on so I can see when I get to the tip. <laughs> I'm just going back and forth here. I don't want to touch my cutting edge. And it's starting to, it's starting to curve down. Don't flip and cut your thumb. And it's starting to get closer to that tip. And you know, when your sandpaper gets old, you can peel it off and re-glue it, or you can be like me, I'd probably just glue another piece right on top of it. I just, that, that's the only thing I'd use this board for, is fixing tips. Because your sandpaper, you can tell I'm tearing it up. <laughs> Eric Mueller says, faster! <laughs> Probably don't want to do that. I don't know if that'd bend your blade. Go back and I forth. doubt it, but back and forth. Try to find your sandpaper you probably haven't chewed up. Dave Barry says hi. Hi Dave. Hey. Big Bob joined us from Florida. Hey, Bob. Now, it's getting closer, but I can still, still see a, a flat blurry. spot on there. Okay. Looks like you only get one knife out of sheet of sandpaper, because this, uh, this isn't holding up real well. Now I'm going to have to find some spaces that uh, I haven't used up yet. I'm guessing when you get to the edge, you probably want to be careful you don't poke yourself. Oh! Dave Stetson's watching. How hot's it in, in Arizona right now, Dave? Dale Kirkpatrick's watching. Hi, Dale. Let's see hey, Phil Pugh. Hey, Phil. Mr. Mike Pounders. How you doing, Mike? This is just regular old cheap sandpaper you get off the of rag at Walmart. So maybe some better sandpaper probably last longer. Now I'm to the tip. But I have this hump back here. It may bother some people, other people they may not care. So if you don't like that, then you just want to change your angle a little bit and start working on that. Now this is still going to have a burr on the end because you've reshaped that tip. So now you need to take it to your strop. And you need to work that and get that little burr off the end of it because where the two planes have met each other, there's a little tiny burr on there. Dave Stetson says, I'm sure you got a belt that'd make it a lot quicker. Yeah, this first time I've ever done it, Dave. All the way. Yeah. <laughs> I usually give up and go to the belt. <laughs> Um, Eric Mueller has a question. He said, would it help if you used wet sandpaper with water? Uh, you're not going to generate. You know, this is 
I can rub this like I was doing. And I'm going pretty fast over Don't the sandpaper. Don't slip and cut your leg. And it's not going to burn me. It says not hot. But if I went for a long period of time as fast as I could, it probably would burn you. Mm -hmm. Because you are generating friction. I probably wouldn't go that fast, just so you don't burn yourself or burn the blade. But it'll take a lot to burn this blade this way. But you probably can do it. You know, maybe just slow strokes like this, and it'll never get hot. Don Reinhardt said, howdy. How, Don? Hello. Um, Eric says, I meant more for helping sandpaper hold up. Oh, do, you mean like putting water on sandpaper make it hold up better? You know, when it comes to you guys stropping and actually repairing knife tips, I'm probably not the best person to ask because I don't do it. But I do know that you can fix a tip this way. The way I fix them, I would already be carving. Because <laughs> you're going to go to the belt. It would have took me literally, I don't know, 10 seconds. Two seconds on the belt, two or three seconds, and then a quick, easy, light buffing because I know that the cutting edge is already there. So if you have a belt sander, it doesn't have to be a knife-making belt sander. It can be a one that runs this way to do your handles or sand wood. They don't have to be an actual vertical. It can be horizontal. So if I was going to fix it on this, there's my broken tip again. And we'll make it bigger. There, now it's nice and flat. People say you'll burn it. Well, you only burn it if you want to sit there and hold it forever on there. So just lightly. Tip back. It's not hot. So that's kind of a, I don't know. Hold it on there forever. Yeah, it's going to get hot. It's just it's a light touch. Then somebody said a bench grinder burn your tip up. Well, we'll flatten that back out because we have a bench grinder over here. Deborah from Australia said hi. Hi, well, Deborah. I've never done this on here, so if it does burn up, then whoever said that's right. <laughs> when you don't know the answer, test the theory. Not burning. Tip so you'd have to hold it for a long time yeah, then, right? You just want to touch it. It's it, better if you have a little cup of water and every time you touch it, stick it in the water, then you never have to worry. Now there's a burr on there. So I'm gonna go to the buffer, which would be like stropping it. I'm just hitting it on that one side to get that burr off. I'm not pushing real hard because... And some people like to stick their tip in like this. That helps get the burr off too. I don't do that, but I've seen people do it. So now I have a shorter knife than I started with. But you've but got a workable knife. I still have all this metal back here to carve sure. with. So if I'd have went the other way and brought the cutting edge to that tip, my cutting edge would have probably been right in there now. I'd have lost all that metal. <laughs> Dave Stetson, you just wasted a really nice knife. Yes. Yes, he did. <laughs> Dave, actually, I'm, I was going to send this one to you. You still want it? <laughs> Sweet of him. And we have uh, Mike on here from Germany. I'm not for sure if I can pronounce your last name correctly, Mike, but hi. 
Um, Don says he uses a John Burke machine I bought years ago, has a low RPM motor. Yeah, anything works, and what I would advise is quenching. Touch it on the belt sander, touch it on a wheel, dunk it in water. It'll never, it's better to be safe than sorry. Because you, you burn your tip, then you're going to have to go grind that off too, because it'll, it just won't cut right after that. So that's that's about it, and yes, I did ruin that piece of sandpaper. If I probably use the paper I use to sharpen the knives on the belt sander, 220, 400, it probably would have held up a lot better. But this is really cheap. I don't even know what it's called. Just <laughs> sandpaper, I guess. Dave says thanks, but it's not my size. <laughs> On, now babe. it's a little detail blade. <laughs> Actually, this is a, this is a shop knife, which I should probably quit using some of these because this is a really old. <laughs> Kenny Helby wanted to glue two pieces of black on there and two white, see what it looked like. He did this when I first started working there, back in 1993. So. This shop knife too. I should probably put it up what's left of it. Because that's an old one. And somebody talked about old knives from the 90s. Maybe Dave Stetson can help in this area. I don't think there was a whole lot of production knife makers in the mid to late 80s is where the big boom started happening with, with Helvey. Helvey come out in 1988. Denny knives come out in 1991. I think Flex Cut come out in 92 or 93. Ralph Long was somewhere around 91, 92. All these knife makers started making knives to sell at shows. Doesn't mean that there wasn't knife makers that was in other people's clubs from a long time ago, but these were some of the first ones. Bo T was in the early 90s that come out and sold retail. But since Stetson's like 250 years old, he could probably answer this. <laughs> oh. Just kidding, Dave. <laughs> Even though you are the godfather. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, we got some questions and some comments. Um, uh, Deborah from Australia says, send it my way if Dave doesn't want it. Um, and then Mike from Germany says, what about using stones? Mike, we have a YouTube video out there on our YouTube channel. Rich, we don't have stones to use, but he kind of gives instructions on how to use the stones. It's similar, the same motions as you use a stropping. So I guess if Rich wants to add to that, he can. Now, a stone. Let's pretend this is this is a stone. No, oh, Dave Stetson said they used hunting knives. Okay, go ahead. I know Don Mertz made a lot of knives out of pocket knives that he carved with. He changed the profile with blades and sometimes the handles or took the blades out and made his own handles. If this was a piece of stone, you know, a strop, you've got to use this motion because if you come back this way, you're, you're going to cut it. See that? I'm cutting into that leather. On a stone, now I have the, I have the angle up so I don't cut my strop, but if you pretend this is a stone, you can go that way, you can go this way, saw it, because your stone, your edge is not going to cut in there, so you can't go. And I've seen people put their finger on there and do it in circles like this. Flip it over. Stone's more forgiving. Find their bevel. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you do have to find your bevel. Like, you lay it flat, and on a heavy knife, you rock it towards the cutting edge because that bevel does not go all the way up the back. And for more stropping videos, there are some on our YouTube channel. One thing about a strop, the leather gives. So if, even if you can't find your bevel, if you take and push that down to the cutting edge and then move it, you're on the bevel because the strop gives. Now if you hold it like this, of course you're not doing nothing. But I hold my knife flat and I twist it down and I pull it back towards me. Turn it over. But on, like I said, on a stone, 
you can do that motion. When I'm sharpening these knives on a belt sander, I'm going like this, like this. It just depends on where my brain is or how bored I am. <laughs> From standing there sharpening 50 knives. <laughs> I've even tried to do it one-handed just to see, it's, you know, it's like being in a circus, new circus trick. So <laughs> sometimes I catch myself watching TV because I can feel the bevel. And I like to saw more than anything back and forth because I think all those granules in your belt hit at different spots in your blade and they help create that burr. And what that burr, if you get that burr at 80 grit and you go and buff your knife, you're going to have an 80 grit cutting edge, which means not going to be as sharp. Get that burr at 80 and then walk it all the way down to 1200, 2000. You've got a 2,000 grit burr that's going to cut finer, smoother, things like you don't have to pull as hard. 80 grit, you'd have to carve a little bit with more ump than you would at 1,200. Okay. That's all I mean. Dan says hi from Florida. Hi, Dan. Uh, Mike from Germany again, he was asking about the, the stones. He says he has trouble detecting burrs. And before you get with the answer him, Dave Stetson says... <laughs> Well, you know, in an emergency, you can sharpen a pig bone. So, I mean, that's that's interesting. So, you know. <laughs> okay, your burr. When you get your burr, you should be able to hold. If you're going this way, your burr should be facing towards you. You should be able to hold it in a light and turn that blade until you see the white line down the cutting edge. A continuous white line. If you don't have a solid line down there you don't have your knife burred all the way down i do the same thing when i'm sharpening i turn it and i look to make sure i have that burr in when i say the white line it looks like a white line down the cutting edge if you do not knock that burr off once you have it you will leave drag marks in your carvings so to knock that burr off you need to go to strop and I think rubbing a little compound on there helps pull that burr off there. And Don Mertz gave me good advice, which I was alluding to with the 80 grit. If you get that burr on a stone at 400 grit, you're going to have a hard time getting that burr off there because it's a bigger burr. If you step your stone down to 2,000, and you keep working that burr till the burr looks, that white line will be small. You have now 2,000 burr and the strop will knock those teeth off a lot easier. That's where I messed up the last time we did a video on those diamond sticks. I got the burr on the coarse one and then flew through the other ones and didn't really do much. I needed to get the burr on the super fine, which would have Probably not made me look like I didn't know what I was doing when I was trying to get the burr <laughs> off with the strop. Because I'm thinking, man, these things, these things just ain't falling off here. So, Don told me what I did wrong, and I appreciate all the advice from these guys that have been around and done it for years, you know. I know one way, and that's the way that I started. These are new techniques for me, too. I have, that's the first time uh, I fixed a tip on sandpaper. I, I did one or showed you how to do it on a stone. I don't even know if I really fixed one or not. can't remember. <laughs> but, Busy mind. But that's quick. Quick way to do it. And you save your blade. You just make it, you know, an eighth of an inch shorter. Unless you snap it off way back here, then you can even go to a file. Just as long as you ain't probably going like that on a file. You need to dunk it in water, quench it, so you don't burn it. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know, you got, you know, we're trying to think of some trivia questions for y'all. Are you guys yeah. ready for one, maybe? Maybe yeah. this week, Holly will post one, <laughs> if you guys can guess. In our spare time, we've been racking our brains, <laughs> trying to do a new, something new, um, trivia for a gift certificate and um, for everybody to Look participate in like we've done. That's the fancy John Overby knife. Mm -hmm. Got one done. I kind of like his the handle and Blake's handle. I like the squareness of them. Just my opinion. 
But oh, Dave Stetson said though that pig bone does not hold an edge very long, so that's that's good to know. <laughs> How about popsicle sticks? <laughs> there you go. Oh, Ray Branch said hi. Hi, Ray. Dwayne's on here. Hi, Bub. So any other questions? Melissa's on here. Hi. Uh, Jared says I really enjoy your videos, guys. Cheers. Thanks, Jared. So. Remember, you got the burr off? Check your knife on a piece of wood. You don't want to see any drag marks. And it should be a really smooth cut. And you always want to come up here to the end grain, which is you really hard. You just hit hard. me with that piece of wood. Yeah, see, you get good at flicking. Yeah, yeah, you know. Can't walk through the house without finding wood chips. Just so you know, look, there it's on my shoulder. There, you can just have it back. Just to be safe, you should probably wear your carving glove on this hand that's holding the sandpaper so you don't stick that right in your thumb thinking you know I'm gonna smack that guy when I see him he didn't tell me to wear a glove well I just told you <laughs> wear a glove so, wear a glove um, Jared says he likes the new Overby knives very nice design cool yeah that, done by uh, Mr. John Overby actually all these signature handles I don't design them they design them. I have a whole big box full of their prototypes that they send to me. And then I try the best I can to get as close as possible. Because we don't have the same machines. They may have carved it. So I get it close, and then we go from there. Sometimes mm -hmm. we tinker them here and there. But John's mm -hmm. will be out probably, probably sometime at the end of September, right around there. Because he's going to get his first. His first order will all go to him. And right You can now, get them from him when he gets them. Yeah, you can call and get in line because he'll have the first first numbered ones. They're low numbers. Mm -hmm. And we plan on taking them to him in September in Wisconsin. So that's yeah. when he'll get them. So, so you can get them from him when he places, when he gets his, he'll have his right away. You don't have to wait. So just get follow him, him around everywhere he walks at the show until he <laughs> comes by our table and picks them up. And then make him dig through there and find number two. Say, that's mine, that's mine. Because knife number two is really the first knife production because they keep number one. <laughs> number two is the knife to have. You're welcome, John. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Stetson said, Popsticle sticks can be sharpened on the sidewalk. So now we know it's something we can get Scott to go do after sharpener popsicle sticks. Of course, you guys know that John Overby's new name is Jart Wilson. Jart. <laughs> Brother to Art Wilson, who's Blake. Then the original, Bart Wilson. His name is Bart. <laughs> Stan Pratt said, hi, Rich. Yeah, we met Stan at the Buckeye. <laughs> Hello, Stan. Uh, oh, Don Reinhardt says, glove won't stop the point. First-hand experience. You're right, Don, but he, he wanted to throw out there to put the glove on because when he does videos, we get so much backlash sometimes. People go, why are you wearing a glove? And uh, I see what they're saying. They're, they're thinking safety. So he's just saying, you know, wear your glove. But yes, uh, carving gloves do not keep you from stabbing yourself. Because you can still stab yourself. So it's, that's, that's the wood carving. It's not, you know, if I cut myself, it's more or less when I cut myself. You know, you could mount, if you don't want to stab yourself, <laughs> screw it under the table, kitchen table. Yeah, so your wife will punch you. Then you or don't your... need any hand. You can just sit there because this is mounted. You can sit there and go like this and not worry about this hand holding it. You just drive it into the kitchen table along with the hole that you use to screw the yeah, strap that into work it. Yeah, once until your wife beats you with the rolling pin. So, uh, Dwayne Gosnell says, I got a Rich Smithson Signature ser Series number one. Yeah, Dwayne's special. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's series number three. That's the only one ever made. <laughs> I guess that's that's it. So be looking and checking back this week. We'll we'll come up with some kind of trivia question. You guys can win a gift certificate or 
I don't know, maybe you can come over and help Holly clean the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys, somebody can come over and dust all of our wood carvings. Yeah. All, all of eight, them. I think there's 800 of them. Yeah. That's, yeah this is the Chinese finger torture thing. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> Dwayne says, secret knife, he doesn't know it's missing. Yeah, <laughs> So, well, maybe sometime when we get some time, we'll start posting some of our wood carvings that are on our display in our mm -hmm. office. There's some neat ones out there. So, we'll make sure we post this to Facebook for those who tuned in late and you want to see how I fixed the tip. It'll be on our Facebook group and you can watch it, okay? So, we got to go back to sanding knives. I got to sand them. He's going to start sharpening. So, fun's over. Yeah. All right. Face. Yep, Dwayne's got to go. He's going live at 5. That's right. Go on to Dwayne Carving Friends and go watch him. He's doing a live video at 5. Peace yep. out, guys. Have a nice See evening. Ya. Bye.